Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on AgriDex. My name is Chitra Dusia, and thank you all for joining today's webinar. During this webinar, we will discuss about AgriDex. To talk about this topic, we have Mr. Ashish Srivastava with us. Mr. Ashish is head of Quant and Market Structure Group at NCDEX, the largest agriculture commodities exchange in India. He has over 16 years of professional experience and holds expertise in the sphere of derivative trading, corn finance, and market microstructure. Mr. Ashish has also designed advanced trading and matching system for NCDEX. Before joining NCDEX, Mr. Ashish worked as an investment analyst and derivative trader in the US. Before we begin this webinar, would like to share details about how you can interact with us today. As an attendee of the webinar, you will be in listen and view only mode. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in Q&A option on your screen. We will take a session at the end of this webinar and try to address all your questions. So now I request Mr. Ashish to commence the session. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Ashish and uh... And uh, we are here today to discuss a little bit about uh, the AgriDex, which is a new tradable index. This is the first agricultural futures index that is tradable. Uh, in this webinar, uh, we will cover certain aspect of the index, like we will start with the key features, then certain something about the calculation and what kind of weighting scheme we are using. Uh, certain things related to commodity selection criteria, current components, uh, what are rollover, and how this index is different from the price-weighted index or the price-based index that most of us are familiar about. Uh, then we will see what are the past index performance, what could be the potential trades that we can enter into, and what kind of opportunities this index is offering. And then we will finally look into some uh, contract specification of the futures that might be launched over these. Uh, during this uh, webinar, I would encourage you to raise any question or doubts that you have. You can directly type on it, or if your question is a little bit complex or time-consuming, you can also call us later after this webinar. We will be available. Uh, so let's start. But before we start, I understand that some of you might already be trading in Index Futures or have traded in the past. Uh, for those people, I can understand that it would be easier to understand these things and they might already be very, very excited about this product coming. We are getting a lot of uh, feedbacks uh, from the market. And for those people who have not uh, traded in Agriculture Futures Index or in any index, uh, this seminar is also be useful so that we can uh, introduce you with the index and our in Agridex. Again, if you have any question, please let us know. Uh, I can also understand that there are some people who are already very, very excited about trading. And I also know that some people might wait till the trading is up and running. Uh, for the people who are already very excited, I have a good news that most likely this uh, index uh, trading will start from January. We are hoping pretty much. Uh, so let's start. Uh, 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 about uh, index a little bit. Uh, before I start with the Agridex, let me uh, direct certain things for the people who have not uh, traded in index or who does not know much about the index. So essentially index is the combination of uh, 10 uh, or some more than one kind of uh, component like in the index uh, in, on the equity. There are uh, Nifty and uh, Bank Nifty or Sensex. So they are not just individual stocks. They are the combination of underlying 30 stocks in Sensex case and 50 stocks in uh, uh, Nifty Nifty's case. So essentially, it's a basket, uh, basket of uh, stocks or commodities. In our case, it's agricultural futures. Uh, futures are the underlying of this. Uh, now, what are the advantages of index? As such, index could be used in various ways, actually. Like uh, investment analysts use index to gauge their performance, compare uh, uh, the other people's uh, uh, performance, also to do performance attribution analysis kind of analysis so that they can uh, figure out where, where their strengths and weaknesses are. Also, uh, 
index is uh, pretty widely used to estimate uh, the systematic risk of a particular commodity. What essentially happens is the risk of an individual commodity is defined by its, or a stock also is defined by its total volatility, which is the overall risk. But when we hold few commodities which are unrelated, are less correlated, and we combine them together, then some part of that risk drops out. Sometimes, uh, and that's called a uh, diversifiable risk because you have diversification, you lose the individualness of a particular commodity. So the result is the overall risk, overall uh, volatility tend to reduce when we combine more and more stocks or commodities together. And the risk that is gone out of this is the diversifiable risk or unsystematic risk. And whatever remain is the systematic risk. The, in finance theories, the systematic risk is the systematic risk on which you get rewarded. Like when people say the risk is directly proportional to returns or returns are directly proportional to risk, they are talking about this systematic risk. So stocks, bonds, uh, commodities, everything is priced only and only for the systematic risk. And index, is the tool that can help you devise the systematic risk. Systematic risk in theories is uh, uh, calculated by or estimated by the beta, uh, which is from the regression analysis. It's different than the overall volatility. So, and this beta tells you how much more systematic or less systematic risk you have compared to the index. So the index as, is assumed to have one unit of systematic risk. So if the beta comes out to be 1.5, that means it's the, that particular commodity or the stock is 50% more riskier as far as the systematic risk is concerned. So this is the index. An index also can tell you the overall direction of the price movements uh, of the particular market. So Nifty might tell the overall direction of the stock market in India. Same does by uh sensex bank nifty might tell what the overall banking sector in india is doing and similarly agridex will tell you how the agriculture futures market in india is doing in ncdex because ncdex has a major share in agricultural mar futures market that you can mm, use agridex as a gauge of the return that is provided by the overall futures agricultures market now coming to our agridex agridex itself has 10 different commodities. It's a, it's a combination of 10 liquid commodity futures traded in Agridex, uh, at uh, an, uh, NCDEX trading platform. And how we select them, how we calculate the index, how we combine it, what are the current composition, I will cover in this uh, webinar in more detail. So, but first few key features, like both upstream and downstream commodities are the part of the index. So that means upstream, downstream means like soya bean and soya oil, guar seed and guar gum. So this is the index of overall commodities, whatever turns and meets our liquidity criteria. Part of the liquidity criteria is governed by the SEBI and part from us. So SEBI's guideline says that every component that is the part of the index should have at least 75 crores of ADTV for past one year. And, uh, our criteria is slightly based on liquidity as well, which we use. Uh, now, uh, this is a index on the futures contract. Uh, in unlike uh, Nifty, which is based on the spot prices. So, spot prices of the fifty stocks comes, and then they take an average and give it outside. That's Nifty. So, Nifty's prices are the spot prices that are being traded on NSE. But here in agriculture futures market, we don't have spot prices that are reliable. We don't have continuous spot prices available whole day. Only one or two times we pull the prices and give disseminated to the market. Index calculation based on these prices might be very unreliable. So to solve this, the global practice is not to use the spot prices of the of the commodities to calculate the index, but rather use the futures contracts price, the near month futures contract, because it's the near month futures contract is also known as the spot month or very close to the spot. It's more reflective of the spot prices than the spot price itself because it's been traded. It's continuously open for everyone to trade. Uh, 
and so on the national level. So the futures prices are more reliable. So our input to calculate this index is the futures. That's why it's the futures index. Agriculture's commodities futures index. Now, when we calculate this index, we need to take the commodities, we need to select them and then give some weightings. Uh, for example, Nifty is the value weighted, free float value weighted. So whatever is the value of the company compared to the rest of the 50, the weight is based on that. So bigger the company, so the alliance is bigger, so the alliance will have more weight compared to the small company. Now here in the commodities, we can also come up with the value. So this is a value weight, weighted index. So what kind of value we might take to weight it because there is no capitalization as such. The capitalization equivalent of agricultural commodities would be the production value. So we take the production value, we take the average of five years and we figure out what is the value of the commodity produced or consumed in our country. But also we use the mm, liquidity weighted. Now, what is liquidity weighted? Liquidity weighted is based on the trading that has been uh, taken place in, in those underlying futures contracts. So we take 50% on the production weight, 50% on the liquidity weight. Now, liquidity, we measure by ADTV. Uh, the reason for doing this is uh, that because we don't want one particular commodity that has been produced large but has no trading interest in India taking too much weight. Also, we don't want 100% to be traded uh, trading value weighted index because if that's the case, then the most traded li commodity, most liquid commodity will have the maximum weight in the index. But index is uh, a key feature is that it provides a diversification among all those commodities. To balance that out, we take 50-50 because both are important. Otherwise, if we don't take 50-50, if we take 100% production, then commodities like wheat might have 80% weight. If not, then maybe soy oil or guar seed might have 80% weight. To tame this thing down, to solve the issue, we take 50% production weight and 50% liquidity weight. Also, we understand that we need to create the proper diversification among various kinds of commodities, like from various subgroups, like oil and oil seeds or food grains or spices to make sure that the index represent pretty much from every sector we have sector floors and caps what that means is if in case we our commodities group like uh, spices fall too below a certain number we cannot let it go down so we introduced a sector level floor on that and also one sector should not go above a certain percent, which is 40% we selected. So we put a cap, uh, a cap of 40% on the sector itself. Then we went also on to the commodity level because we don't want any commodities weight falling less than 3% and more than 20%. So on the commodity level, there are 3% and 20% are the floors and caps. And this is done only to make sure that the index is pretty well diversified. It's represent the overall market. Uh, as I told that the this index is based on the futures prices, near month futures prices. That means that we need to keep on moving from near month to other near month when the near month expires, because every contract expires around 20th. So before this contract expires, we have to roll over from this contract to the next month contract before the liquidity starts shifting so that we have continuous prices. Now, because we roll over every month, there is some rollover mechanism, which we, which I will uh, explain in a little bit more detail. Also, there is a notion that the prices of the underlying might be rising, but because you are rolling over, there is some loss in the carry, which is the rollover yield, which is negative in the cases of indices. Well, this is the same practice around the world. Most of the com agriculture's commodities uh, uh, indices are based on this method only that they take 50 percent uh, some weightage of liquidity some weightage of production and they are based on the front month futures contract and when these contracts reach cl close to the expiration we roll them over to the next month contract so that we have a continuous series while trading this index you don't have to worry about these things this is the statistics that we will be doing and publishing the value in the market you only have to see the index's value, where it is going. If you think you are bullish, you think that this basket is going to grow, you buy the futures contract. 
Otherwise, you do the opposite. You sell the futures contract. So you don't have to worry about all these calculations. We will do it for you. Uh, this index, when I say we, we have appointed NAC indices for the live maintenance and calculation of the index. So it's not we who are doing it. We are providing with a feed uh, where we are sending them the 10 liquid commodities live prices. They are maintaining the index. They are calculating it. Uh, and also, this is the credibility issue. They are more credible. They are the same people who are calculating uh, Nifty right now, Nifty Bank, Nifty, and all NSC indices. So they are the professional and uh, right people to calculate, and they are very familiar with Indian markets as well. So they are maintaining our index. So this index has to be balanced. That means the weights need to be recalculated and recalibrated, and all the commodity selection criteria has to look into once one more time every year on the 1st April. So 31st March is evening, we will reset the index. Now resetting means we will calculate the liquidity weighted and the production weights of the last year, the current, the latest estimates and recalculate the weights, what essentially what proportion we want to put in and what uh, commodity and then we calculate the liquidity weight and then somehow we come up with the final weight and we rebalance the index. So again, this is not the market has to worry about. Some people who are doing engaging into the index arbitrage might be very much willing to understand what it is. But whatever we are replacing or we are rebalancing, we will inform the market pretty much a uh, few months before. So a few months before, you will be knowing what new commodities might be, if some commodities dropping out or some new commodities coming in, what are the weights and whatever is the criteria. Also, you can yourself follow the certain calculation method and you also come up with the same, same calculation if you want to do upfront. So this is these are the key features. Now we will look something into more details on the calculation method uh, for the people who are doing index arbitrage or want to understand it might be a valuable formula. It's very simple though. So first of all, the production weight. So production weight is essentially that you can see in front of your screen is the production of the particular commodity that is the part of the index divided by the total production value of the of the constituent commodities and that will give us the proportion of of the mm, of that commodity to be put based on the production weights so essentially this is how we get the mm, production weight also, you can see production, is, when we say production, it's not just the one year production, it's an average of past five years. So to find out what is the production average of past five years is simple average formula. What we did is that we take the spot prices of the commodities, multiply into the production, divided by five, because we are taking the average of five. And this gives us the average of production value of the last five years, very simple. Similarly, we do the same thing for to calculate the liquidity weights. We take the traded value of a particular commodity for one year uh, from January to December, and we divide it by the total traded value of all the commodities in the index. So 10 commodities in the index, and this gives us a liquidity weight. Now we do, as I said, it's a 50-50%. So what we do is we take the 50% weight of the commodity based on the production and 50% weight of this commodity based on the liquidity and we club them up. So the effective weight that we come up with is 50% from the production, 50% from the liquidity. And for the same reason, as I said, we don't want uh, most uh, bigger production value com commodity to take bigger chunk in the index, even if it's trading is nothing. And also to avoid a commodity that has huge trading volume, but not that much of production value. So to balance that thing out, that's why it's 50-50. And based on why we reach 50-50, why not 70-30, that's global practice, because we did a lot of simulation and we tried to figure out which method, which weighting scheme is, keeps the index more uh, efficient in the form of hedging efficiency, uh, in the form of uh, cost of trading, in the form of risk reward. Uh, that means return over uh, risk or the risk over return. So that ever efficient one that gives the maximum return on the least risk. And also it has a good correlation with the random portfolios generated. So hedge efficiency tend to be better. Uh, 
by doing this. If there is any concern or question, please write to us. We will explain that. <clears throat> As I said, the to diversify, we have introduced these sector caps. So these are the few sectors that you can see on your screen that 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 are part or could be part of the index in future date. And these are all done to ensure the adequate amount of diversification. So the unsystematic risk is eliminated to a maximum. And whatever remains is more close to what we call systematic risk. The index components, uh, right now you can see uh, for 1920, this is the sample that we created. Uh, so the weights in this uh, index that has been calculated right now is something like this. Now, if you could uh, see the JIRA has 3.773% weight in the index. Uh, in the pie chart that you can is in your in front of you, if I don't put the underlying caps, then it uh, the Jira's uh, share in the index might fall below three percent. But because of our floors on floors and caps, the number is three point seven three. That means the index has some if this Jira has some effect on the index. Uh, if we go below, then then Jira is you can neglect. You know, then that's not the purpose of the index. Uh, purpose of the index is to create maximum diversification as well. So these are the current weights, uh, and these weights might change on na next uh, March. That means April 1st, you will see the new weights new based on the new uh, production data and the traded volumes, and we will update it to the market around January. Uh, also, there is some difference uh, that I want to a uh, little bit uh, talk about is the difference between stock and the commodities investment. First of all, the word commodity investment is not mm, not uh, not the correct reflection of what's going on because uh, commodities are usually futures contracts, and using them as an investment tool is not a great idea because you you don't because their effect on your portfolio is not similar to buying stocks or anything spot because of a lot of reasons. First thing is the tax uh, consideration. When you are going in the futures and rolling over, um, these are all considered as the incomes, not the capital gains. So you cannot go into investing in the uh, agriculture futures contract and claiming the long-term uh, long capital gains. So the tax structure is different. Uh, also, there's a problem because these are not the spot prices, so you cannot just buy and hold. Somebody has to keep on rolling. So I'm not talking about the index. I'm talking about any commodity futures. So if you are bullish on, say, soya bean, and you want to hold it for one year, you have to keep on coming into the market and buy one contract when it expires or reach to expiration. You need to sell that one and roll over to the next month. And you have to keep doing this. And whenever you are doing this, uh, of course, there is a transaction cost gone uh, in that. But other than transaction cost, something else happens is like the carry you lose. What that essentially means is, let's take an example, certain commodities trading at the spot price is 1,000, but the futures contract is trading at, the front month futures contract is trading at 1,050. Uh, but at the expiration, if the price does not move anywhere, price spot price remain 1,000, but the futures will converge to this spot price so the price will become 1000 so you the trader lose 50 uh, 50 rupees in in this transaction and then he has to roll over again and uh, amaze, uh, just imagine the next contract is also trading at uh, 1050 and if you hold that one by the expiration you lost 50 if the underlying price is not moving anywhere and this 30 50 price at the every time is the carry of that particular commodity so you have to take all the return of the commodity subtracted by the total carry of that period. So if it's one period, there will be 12 rollovers, maybe or maybe slightly less based on the contract duration you take, but you need to subtract it from your profits. So the overall gain, so if the commodities gain 30%, but the carry cost coming out to be around 20%, then you need to subtract this 20% and your net return becomes is only 10%. So for long-term investing in commodities, it's not investing, it's mostly trading actually, but we can still use it as a part of investment portfolio because of its great advantages uh, but this thing need to be kept into the mind because uh, every time you roll over you lose some carry so this carry makes the return a little lower so this is just i wanted to point out like in this figure if you could see if you are invest at time t is equal to zero you invest in a stock 
and you hold it three months and whatever you exit is your exit price and you subtract it with the initial price that gives you a gain. But in commodities futures, if you want to go in soybean and if you only go with the front month contract, then you do initiate position in the front month contract when this front month contract is about to expire you need to sell that and move on to the next month contract. And you need to keep on doing it. And every time you do it, you lose some, some value in, in form of uh, carry. So, so that's why if you hold the, this position for very, very long time, then you lost a lot of carry. And this carry loss on, happens as long as the market is in contango. When the market is in backwardation, you will have carry gain actually, because you will sell at higher price and keep on buying at a lower price. So if, if the market is in backwardation, then you will have some gain. So, but usually commodities can, agricultural commodities can go backwardation and from backwardation to uh, contango pretty often based on seasonality as well so you need to be a little bit careful and don't confuse between stock investment and the commodities investment now the same problem actually happens in uh, in the index uh, that we have uh, putting forward agridex uh, which the, the issue is not in the nifty because nifty is a spot index so they don't have to roll over anything but we have to keep on rolling over and every time we roll over these, uh, if the market is in contango, then we lose something, some small yield. So, so this yield is not realized by any ways. Even if you are doing it or I am doing it, there is no way that this realize this yield is being realized because it's the cost of carrying this underlying commodity. So, and this is a cost, not a revenue. So that goes out from the return realized from the prices. So this is the concept that we. Uh, that, I, that I wanted to convey. And that's why this index is different from the price-based index, because I can make the price-based index, which was our dhania, which is now in Krishi, uh, which is the price-based index, that essentially capturing the prices. So it, any 20% rise in, in, in Krishi means that the underlying commodities, prices have moved 20% up. But 20% move in Igridex means that the return realized during that period by our investor would be 30% or 20%. This is exactly what this is telling. So this is return-based. So what is the difference between price-based and return-based? Price-based is a total movement. Return-based, total movement minus the cost of carry. Whatever left over is the return of the return-based index. It's very much similar to the return-based in Nifty, where you also consider the positive yield that coming out of the dividends. So you keep on dividends and assume that whenever the dividend is realized, it's been invested in the same index. And over the period of time, you will see the massive difference because of this small yield. In the same way, you can see the same difference in Agridex over the period of time, but because this is not a dividend coming in, it's a positive yield, it's a negative cost, the roll yield. So the index performance in long run will not be as much as the price prices are indicating. I think I made it very clear, but still, if you have doubts and concerns, please ask me. So this concept is essentially telling that we our contract expires on 20th on every month, and we roll over before a certain date to make sure that we roll over before uh, before the liquidity starts shifting. Now this chart is showing the past three years performance of uh, Agridex. Uh, and if you could see that it was going up in July 16, till July 16, and after that the market was in a little bit bearishness and then it has been pretty flattened out. If you see the price during the time when this index is showing flattened out, you will see prices are a little bit gaining upside. But this index, because it's total return-based index, the carry is gone out of the returns. So you can see kind of straight, flat market. This market may or may not remain in this flat way. As soon as the volatility comes in to the underlying commodities, this index will become more volatile. And when all the commodities takes a turn, upside or downside, they will. this index will start moving in that direction and as we know that when agricultural commodities goes in a bullish phase they actually go pretty wild so the return on this index could be pretty much actually and when it falls is true and if it is falling and the market is in contango then you this index will fall more than the commodities but if the market is already in backwardation then this index will fall less than the market and same is true when the market is going up if the constituents are going up and market 
is in back validation, this index will give you better return than the prices of the individual commodities, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you have any concern or doubts on this, please ask me a question. And as you can see, it's pretty volatile. These are the performances that we have calculated on the monthly basis from 16 to almost November of this year. And if you could see when it gives, it gives 9% return. And when it falls, it can fall around 4% or more as well. But it's pretty much pretty volatile. But as, And this is the time when the agriculture commodities are pretty less volatile. It's a historical low time somehow globally going on. So I expect that then when the volatilities start coming back into the market, this index will be much more volatile than uh, what it is right now. But still, we can see that there are a lot of opportunities on the monthly basis, on the weekly basis, on the daily basis. Uh, for long term, I again say that be careful when you are going for the long term uh, betting on this index because there is a carry cost going up from it. Uh, but especially but if you think that the market is going to be in a secular bull run and uh, um, and you know what you are doing, then it's better to go with the index than individual commodities. But if you have a pretty, pretty much view on the particular commodity, you directly go with their futures contract. Any question and concern on this, please drop me a line. Some of the benefits uh, of the index. Now, as I discussed uh, earlier, that some of you might already be trading in Nifty or Bank Nifty. You might already be very much aware about the crazy benefit an index offers over the individual components. Uh, the diversification benefits, the liquidity benefits, low cost benefit, the speed of trading, getting in and out of a diversified basket, at the same time, the systematic risk estimation, and so on and so forth. It's also, the index also tend to be more predictable because a uh, uh, lot of individual nets, all these balance sheets related issue in the case of stocks goes away. Uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Technical analysis does better in uh, indices as well. Uh, but what are the uh, other benefits that you can say? This is an overall direction indicator that I explained earlier. It's a diversified basket, so you don't have to take extra risk, excess risk, especially for the retail people who does not understand about much about the individual commodities, but still want to get the benefit by trading the agriculture sector. They can go and have this diversified basket because it will have the maximum risk over reward uh, compared to any other commodity individual futures contract. Also, estimation of the systematic risk, uh, effective benchmarking, real-time calculation. And I said that the key feature is that this index is maintained by NSE Indices, which is a very professional company. Also, the key advantage of our index is that it has a very, very, very low correlation with any asset classes. Uh, and it's I can bet that it would be a very, very great uh, addition to any portfolio that you are maintaining. Uh, or um because it provides a diversification low correlation means higher diversification and people who don't understand the individual agricultural commodities the best way to get the exposure is agridex agridex futures uh, and who knows if they become liquid one day there will be etf available on that and that would be even greater benefit for the retail people I know a lot of you were very excited about this trading and talking about the ETFs, but it depends on how how it goes, how quickly it picks up. I know a lot of you are very excited, but at the same time, uh, first of all, let's do in the indices, then let's see if we could come up with options and then we can go with the ETFs. But at the same time, uh, Low correlation is a great advantage that I always say. You can club it with the uh, various sta trading strategies. Uh, you can also uh, use it as a diversification tool in your trading portfolio if you don't know or even you know about the individual commodity because it's very easy and quick to do so and very cost effective. And usually indexes are also tend to be very liquid. The people who are trading in indices, uh, Nifty or Bank Nifty might uh, already been observed because it, they are kind of very, very liquid compared to the individual. So it's very easy to get in and out. For the trading thing, there are some short term uh, trading strategies to the long term, intermediate term trading strategies that I want to discuss. Now, a lot of you might already be knowing it, but some of you that does not have idea, let me tell you that these are could be used for short term scalp tradings, uh, short term position trading. That means like you for intraday, you can uh, you can take bet on the direction up and down. 
And because they are very technical analysis friendly, uh, you can use some technical tools. Uh, and because they are more predictable, your, your and your client's uh, success might be higher here. Uh, also, it could be used for as an overall directional movement. If we think that all the agricultural futures are going upside, then it's the easiest way to get the exposure to the agricultural market. Uh, index arbitrage is where we have uh, index components traded on the uh, exchanges platform. And there are some weighted sum is not equal equivalent to the futures prices that has been traded. And if the futures prices is higher, index futures prices, then you sell the index futures and buy the components in the same proportion and vice versa if you find the index is lower in price. So this is the index arbitrage. A lot of people have different strategies for index arbitrage. Uh, some of you might be doing it somewhere else as well. So for that purposes, I think ALGO is required, but with ALGO, this could be a, a good strategy because there are only 10, 10 components. So it's easier to execute. And also because those 10 components are most liquid in our platform, again, that provides that uh, ease of getting in and out. But uh, essentially, there's certain kind of algo might be required for that. Then there's calendar spreads. Uh, calendar spreads will be available here. And uh, calendar spread, please pay attention because these calendar spreads could be very useful in this case because the way the calendar is, the launch calendar is being provided. Uh, uh, the launch calendar of uh, the contract launch calendar and the contract calendar is slightly different than the underlying commodities. There are two continuous contract, front month and the next month contract. And after that, uh, quarterly contracts are available for trading. No intermediate contracts are being available. But that means like your three months, six months, nine months and 12 months contracts are available at the beginning. And if that's the case, Calendar spread could be a very good trade because the difference between the year month and the far month could be as much as one year, nine months, six months, three months. And there could be a lot of combination and in, uh, spread arbitrage could also be uh, be taken. Somebody could take the advantage of those as well. Uh, spread arbitrage is available. Yes, it was available a lot of times when there's this kind of system is available. For now, the, I am very sure that there will be a lot of spread arbitrage be available in that. Also, because the far month contracts tend to be a little less liquid compared to the near months, there's more opportunity uh, in the sense of uh, taking advantage of a liquidity in the sense that you can place wider big bid and offers in the far months and uh, hedge it in near month quickly to form a spread. So your profit could be slightly higher and coming quickly might set you up for good profits to start with. Also, the performance analysis, like you, this is the same thing, like you are maintaining certain commodities and you want to see how your performance was, so there's a need of a benchmark. This could serve as a very good benchmark. At the same time, if you want to do something more in-depth analysis on performance attribution, like where my trader is doing good, whether it's good in selection or in capital allocation or the commodities allocation and so on and so forth, this is also you can perform using this index, not the end crucial. Again, the estimation of systematic risk is there. Other than these, uh, there could be some more trades as well. Like some people like to hold uh, a short-term speculative portfolio uh, of say two, three, four, five commodities because they think that these commodities are going to outperform overall commodity segments and they are going to give positive returns. But when we go and buy these, we are pretty much exposed to all systematic risk but we are only betting on their relative performance better than the market. So one strategy is to combine this with the index. You buy whatever you want to get long on, what you are bullish on, and take a equivalent volatility adjusted position in the index. So you are insulated from the downside that might come from the systematic part of the equation. So this, this kind of trading uh, and use will provide a pretty much flexibility to you and a lot of opportunities that were not available as of now are now going to be available in the market. If you have more questions in that, please ask me. Um, if you need some more detailed question, you can call us on our phone also after this webinar. Uh, certain other examples are like somebody want uh, a diversified portfolio but does not understand the individual uh, 
commodities, they can also directly go for that proportion. So somebody want to have 20% invested in the agricultural market for the period, the easiest and quickest way and most cost effective way is to go with the index, index futures. Also, if you want to balance your position and you don't have time to do it quickly, then you can use the index as well. If you are invested already in some form, even in the physical form of the commodities, and for say one month, you realize that there is a collapse coming or um, fall coming in the agricultural commodities price and you want to balance your portfolio, rather than dumping your physical goods or long-term futures position that you are holding, best way is to go in short, take a short position in this futures contract. This will do the trick. It will be more faster, more effective. Whenever you want to get exposure again, you just square off your position in Agridex. And it could go in the other way around also, like you are not uh, you are short in the commodities, but you think that a short term up, um, up move is coming, then you can go long on the agriculture futures uh, contract. And that will serve that purpose as well. Also, there could be certain other tactics like out of 10 commodities, you think that the eight commodities are OK, they will go upside, but two are going downside, but index has everything. So you can buy index and sell those two commodities futures in the same proportion, and then you will be exposed to the basket of eight different commodities. You can also add other commodities you don't like, say, for example, uh, soy oil and guar seed in the index. You think that if these two commodities will not will not be in the index, uh, rather than chana would be better, then you can sell the equivalent. You take the long position in the exit X, you sell these two contracts and then buy Chenna contract. Then you will effectively remove whatever you wanted to remove in the index and you added it. So the kind of flexibility it provides you, if you sit down and think it, it's immense actually. And that the benefits it provides will be uh, immense. And because there are so many use of one product, it cannot be compared with anything else that we had earlier. So we are very excited as well uh, about this product. And because there are so many uses, I assume that the liquidity will be decent for even short-term hedgers who want to hedge their short-term exposure by this contract uh, because the liquidity will be sufficient. Also for the retail people, uh, if you are brokers and you want to recommend, I would say your success rate would be much higher in this futures because index tend to be more predictable. It's just one statistics and because it diversified, it cannot move too much. Uh, it, it it will certainly enhance the success rate and it will be enticing to the retail as well. Uh, it might go similar to Nifty. So if you are doing Nifty, you can little bit add this much as well. It provides the diversification because its return is not, not had literally no correlation with anything else. So I think it's overall to improve the risk reward of your portfolio or investment strategy, this is going to be a pretty useful tool.